Welcome back to Park City, everybody. Day two of the Big Sky football kickoff. I'm John Oglesby with the Big Sky, and we're joined by one of the good guys right here, Tim Walsh, Cal Poly. Thanks so much for joining us as always, Coach. Thanks a lot for having me, John. And a good guy thing, I hope I'm a good coach too. But. Yeah, well, well, I think that goes without saying, right? So last season, you guys make a return to the postseason, getting back to that in a few years away. But uh, still a lot to do, it seems, in terms of the level that you guys can continue to push forward to. As you reflect on last season, what are some of the things that you took away that uh, really set you up for this year? Well, I don't think there's any question. If you just look at the big sky in general, I mean, the balance of power is shifting. You know, I mean, 10 years ago, and I'm sure Jerome would say the same thing, is, you know, every time you come in and see a media poll, the University of Montana would be first and foremost on everybody's mind. Well, and I, th I still think it permeates through the program. But I think that our guys need to understand that everybody in this conference is extremely good and has improved tremendously. And you better understand that uh, it's, it's an eight-game schedule, and regardless of who you play on each individual week, you better be able to win them all. I think that's number one. And then number two, I think that, you know, you have to, when you get the opportunity to get to the playoffs, you have to take advantage of every opportunity. Losing at home was probably a, not a great moment for me in my years of uh, coaching, but uh, it's something that we can learn from and hopefully improve because uh, we went through that experience. You've been around the big sky a long time, year after year after year. You keep pushing forward. But the nice thing that I've always seen about you in the time I've been around you, you still have the same spring in your step, it seems, this time of year year after year. Is that an accurate assessment? Well, I would hope so, and that's why I continue to do it. And, and uh, you know, somebody asked me how much longer I'm going to do it. Well, as long as I feel like I can relate to the players and I give them the opportunity to be successful in the things that they want to succeed in, and that's in the classroom, on the field, and as young men, as long as I feel like that I'm having an impact and, and we can do that, I would love to do it because, uh, as my wife always says, what are you going to do with 12 months a year of retirement? And I said, that's a good point. There are certain things I love to do. The reality is 12 months is a whole year, and uh, this is a time-consuming job, and it takes great energy, but it has great rewards, too. That process you talk about, uh, the 12-year commitment that it takes to be able to do this job, you and I have talked, though, about kind of the, the great work-life balance you have. You're a good football coach. Everybody knows that, but I think you're also pretty good at doing other things outside of football when you have time to. How much is that ability to step away from the field sometimes and enjoy life helped you to keep your career feeling fresh, you know, as far in as you are? Well, I think the tech the, the tech world has definitely changed trying to get away from your job, I'll yeah. tell you that much, because everybody knows how to get a hold of you when they need to get a hold of you. But the reality is if, if you want to be fresh and you want to be good, there are other things in life, you know, and, and, and our job is demanding. And, and when it came time, which is a, a lot of months out of that year that you talked about, but, I mean, you're talking about seven hard days a, a week, uh, you know, 14, 15-hour days, and then you go right into recruiting before you really get any kind, any semblance of a break. Uh, so it's important that you take time, you know, for your family. Uh, it's important that you take time for your own mental self and, and do the thing you enjoy to do. Like I said, I, I love to work out. I love to, to play some golf. I, lo I love to hang out with friends and go see some former players and just talk about the memories that you have and have a lot of laughs. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've learned is if, if you're not laughing, you're not enjoying life, and it's hard to be good at your job when you're not enjoying life. There's no doubt about that. Joe Prothero was here representing Cal Poly. I mean, I, I don't think it goes without saying he's one of the best football players at any position in this conference. What type of guy is he to work with every day? He's driven. There's no question that he wants. He's one of those guys that he wants you to push him, and he wants to be the very best player he can be. And one of the things I've, that I've noticed, and Joe's got a tremendous amount of in, a talent. He is. He's got you know some, some things that are instinctual at that position. Uh, you know, people call him a fullback. He's really a running back. He has great vision. He has great balance. Obviously, he's powerful. But the thing that I think that he's done the best is that his body has changed tremendously from where he was as a freshman to where he is now. I mean, he's 230 pounds, and he's got less than 5% body fat. You know, and when he got here, he was, he was a little pudgy you know, when he first arrived. Uh, but that's changed. And, uh, and the thing that hasn't changed with his success is his drive to be the very best. I mean, he really wants to be the best player he can be. And the other thing that people may not know how he handled this part of it, he wants to win. He will do anything for our team to win a football game, and, and that's what you love. And you mentioned a good point as a football player. I mean, if he wasn't starting at that position, he'd be starting at inside linebacker for us. Like I say, great player he is, and I think he's really helped, obviously, by the style of play that you guys have. That style of play, year after year, makes you the team that every coach comes and sits that that sits in that chair says, well, we're not really too excited to play Cal Poly because of the style of play, but 
What do you guys do week after week to make sure that outside of just the style, you're a football team that people aren't too excited to see show up off the bus on Saturday? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's what we do. There's no question that the triple option causes some people some problems, but I also think it's, it's how we do it and it's how hard do our guys play. I mean, uh, you know, if we, if our team walked into the room and, uh, another team in our conference walked in right next to them. You can pick the other team to beat us. There's no question about it. And we're, we're physically not going to look like the best football team. But the, the mental attitude and the approach that we have to who we are and our buy-in of our players, especially on the offensive line, uh, is something that's pretty special. Uh, they truly believe that if we don't rush for 400 yards a game that they're not doing their job and they haven't played up to their capabilities. Uh, and I know Joe Cooperman's on that uh, for all preseason all, and probably deservingly so. Uh, but if he walked in the room, and Joe is 6'1", 290 pounds, and it's not like he's the most rocked up 290 yeah, yeah. pounds you've ever seen, but his toughness and his leadership and his buy-in, it's incredible. And he knows that, that that's what makes him good, and he wants the other four guys that he plays with to have the exact same approach that he has. And I think that that's difficult to deal with because as much as it's tough to simulate the triple option, the skill part of it, it's tough to simulate how our offensive line plays, too. No doubt about that. It's one of the better offensive attacks in the conference. Did you get ready for this upcoming season? What are some of the things that you need to do to really use last year as a foundation and take off from that? Well, I think, you know, in a couple of games that we lost, I think that uh, we uh, we put the ball on the ground. And uh, in our offense, with the ball handling we have, that's a, a major setback to what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, we're really going to put an emphasis on taking care of the football and making sure that we do it in a uh, in way that we're consistent day in and day out with our players on that. I think secondly, I think that it, you know, it goes to the defensive side of the ball. We need to be better on defense. And uh, probably every coach in the room has been saying that, but with uh, run pass options and all the things that people are doing on the offensive side of the ball, the spread offenses and, and all those things, uh, you, know, you, you need to make sure that your players understand that 24 to 25 points a game is not a bad football game to play. You know, I think uh, players get frustrated, coaches get frustrated, uh, but the reality of the situation, it's a points game. And, uh, you know, if we're averaging 38 points a game on offense and we're holding opponents to 24, we're going to win our share of football games. So it's creating a mentality on defense that isn't going to say that I understand I'm going to give up 24 points. I don't want that attitude. But understanding that it's a long haul, it's a long grind, and that, uh, you know, something does happen in a game where they go 75 yards for a touchdown, all right, play the next play. And, and forget that one and make sure that we limit those things. So those are the two areas we're really going to emphasize. Well, we'll see how that emphasis plays out for the Mustangs this season. Oops. Thanks so much for everything. Best of luck this season. We look forward to seeing how things go. You as well, John. Thank you. All right. That's the head coach of Cal Poly, Tim Walsh. We'll take a short break, and then we come back with the head coach of Northern Arizona, Jerome Sowers. That's coming up after this break on Pluto TV.